One of the most important things that you need to understand when you are homeschooling mathematics is to show all your steps. And I'm going to show you an example of what I'm talking about because I'm going to solve this equation in real time. All right, so the equation is 3 times x minus 2 plus 5 is equal to 2x plus 11. This type of equation in algebra is called a multi-step equation. And I uh, kind of want to emphasize steps, all right? You got to show each step when you're doing your work, all right? So having great academic habits, specifically math habits, is going to really save you a lot of pain when you are solving problems. So I'm going to show you exactly what I'm talking about because I am going to solve, again, this equation in real time. Now, if you think you know how to solve this equation or your child knows how to solve uh, this equation, go ahead and put that answer into the comment section. I'm going to show you the correct answer in just one second. Then, of course, I'm going to go through exactly how you want your child to solve an equation like this. But before we get started, let me tell you who I am. My name is John, and I have been teaching math for decades. And if you need help homeschooling mathematics, I have a complete entire award-winning homeschool math program. You can find more information about it in the links uh, in the description of this video. But I cover uh, pre-algebra, algebra 1, uh, algebra 2, geometry, and pre-calculus. So I really focus on middle and high school mathematics with a uh, strong focus on college preparatory mathematics. So here is our problem and the solution to this equation is x is equal to 12. Now, if your child got this right, that is fantastic. I definitely have to give them a nice little happy face and an A plus and a 100%. Now, as I indicated, this is what we call a multi-step equation. So we have to take more than a few steps to get the right answer. Now, when you first start to learn about equations in algebra, you uh, start to learn something called a one-step equation, something like this, 2x is equal to 10. So to solve this equation, all you have to do is take one step, and in this equation, all we have to do is divide both sides of the equation by 2 to get the answer, and uh, here it would be x is equal to 5. All right, so this is an example of a one-step equation. Now, there's different types of one-step equations, but uh, you got to master these equations. And then you move on to something called two-step equations. So let me show you an example of a two-step equation, something like 2y minus 1 is equal to 5. All right, so to solve this equation, of course, it's going to take two steps. All right, so the first step is we need to add 1 to both, side, uh, both sides of the equation. And then we're going to have 2y is equal to 6. And now we're down to a one-step equation. So y is going to be equal to 3 because we're going to divide both sides of the equation by 2. So 6 divided by 2 is 3. So this is the solution to this equation. And then, of course, we have the solution to this one-step equation right here. Now, when you are learning how to solve multi-step equations, you can't really get into these equations until you fully understand how to solve one-step equations, right? So the way this works in all algebra courses, and of course in my pre-algebra and algebra one courses, uh, your child will learn all of this comprehensively, but you got to get uh, one-step equations down, and then you start to learn how to solve two-step equations. And then finally, you get into multi-step equations. Okay, so hopefully your uh, child understands uh, how to do these type of equations. And if they don't, no big deal. Just got to get them into a good course. Hopefully something like my courses. Okay, so here is our equation. Now, let me go ahead and give you some big picture uh, concepts when you're solving any algebraic equation. Now, the first thing is we want to get all of our variables, and I'm kind of generally speaking here, on the left-hand side. So in this equation, we're dealing with the uh, variable x. We want to get all of our uh, x terms, anything with an x, on the left-hand side. And we want to get all of our numbers, things like 5 and 11, etc., on the right-hand side. So we're going to have to shuffle things around uh, to kind of get this format, all right? So we're going to get all of our variable terms to the left 
and all of our numbers to the right. And we're just going to whittle this equation down until we get to a simple one-step equation. And then we can solve this equation for x, right? But so these are some of the big picture concepts. Now, another big picture concept here is that when you are solving equations in algebra, you can do pretty much what uh, you want to this equation as long as, as long as you do it equally to both sides. So if I want to subtract uh, 5 from this side of the equation, no big deal as long as I subtract 5 from this side of the equation as well. Right? So kind of the golden rule of algebra is you can do anything you want more or less to an equation as long as you do it equally to both sides. Okay, so these are some big things that we need to keep in mind. And then right here is where our starting point is going to be in this equation. So anytime you see a variable or a number outside of a sum and difference in mathematics and algebra, just like we have right here, this is what we call a distributive property situation. All right, so we need to use something called the distributive property. And anytime you have an equation, that has a distributive property kind of a situation going on, you have to start there. So this is going to be our starting point. And then from that point, we're going to start shuffling things around to get all the numbers to the right and all the variables on the left until finally we can solve a simple one-step equation. All right, so if you think you understand what I'm talking about and you didn't get the right answer, maybe you want to pause the video and see if you can figure this out. All right, so I'm going to go ahead and solve this equation right now. Okay, so as I indicated, we need to start with any distributive property situations. And of course, in this equation, we have one right here. So what is the distributive property? Well, this is a big thing that you learn in mathematics, especially in algebra. And basically, it's a way we can multiply. So let me show you a simple example. So if I have 3 times 10, all right, so what's 3 times 10? Well, hopefully you're saying, come on, Mr. YouTube Math Man, uh, 3 times 10 is 30, and you would be right. Now, if you notice here, I just have 10 by itself, but I can break up 10 in any sort of sum and difference. In other words, I can rewrite 10 or express it in a different way. So in other words, I can think of the problem this way. So maybe like 3 uh, times this parentheses, maybe like 7 plus 3. All right, so 3 times 7 plus 3 and 7 plus 3 is 10. Well, these problems are the same. But if you recall from the order of operations, PEMDAS, right? So hopefully you understand this. This is the correct order of operations. The first thing that we need to do is any parentheses. So we have parentheses right here. So 7 plus 3 is what? Well, that is 10. And then, of course, 3 times 10 is 30. So hopefully you can see that uh, the answer to this problem will be 30. But we do have a different property we can apply to solve this problem, and that is called the distributive property. So how does this work? Well, let's take a look at this simple example, and then we'll apply it in our equation. So with, uh, the way the distributive property works is the following. We could take this number outside of this parenthesis and multiply it in or distribute it into the numbers inside of the parentheses. So 3 times 7 is what? Well, that's 21 plus, because we have an addition problem right here, 3 times 3 is what? That's 9. All right, so 21 plus 9, of course, is 30. So this is an illustration of the distributive property. Again, it's another way we can multiply. Uh, a number or a uh, variable to a sum and difference. And we really need to understand this in algebra. Okay, so here again, we need to use this, this distributed property as the first step because we really can't do anything with these variables and numbers. They're kind of locked inside of these parentheses right here. So let's go ahead and apply the distributive property. So 3 times x is going to be 3x minus... 3 times 2, which of course is 6. Okay, so that is our first step. And then what we're going to do is just simply write the rest of the equation like so. All right, we're taking one step at a time. All right, so we have 3x minus 6 plus 5 is equal to 2x plus 11. Now, as I talked about, we want to get all of our variables to the left and all of our numbers to the right. 
But before we do that, what we want to do is kind of clean up both sides of the equation and add any, things, uh, any numbers together or any like terms together. So in other words, if we had a 3x over here, maybe like a 5x, we would add those together. But in this case, we have a number and another number that we can add together. So we want to simplify both sides of the equation before we start moving things around. So negative 6 plus 5 is what? Now, hopefully you understand positive and negative numbers, because if you don't, you're not going to be able to solve algebraic equations. But negative 6 plus 5 is a negative 1. So we can write this now this way, 3x plus negative 1 is equal to 2x plus 11. Now, you could also write this uh, in the following manner. You can write plus negative 1 or 3x minus 1, which is the same thing as plus negative 1. So we'll leave it like this uh, for uh, this particular example. But again, we're just taking one step at a time. Okay, so to review before we go any further, the first thing that we did was the distributive property. And we, then we uh, got down to this point, and then we added these two numbers together. So we had a minus 6 and a positive 5. That's negative 1. So I'll write it this way, 3x minus 1 is equal to 2x plus 11. Okay, so at this point, we're going to start moving our variables to the left and our numbers to the right. Okay, so now let's start to move all of our numbers to the right and our variables to the left. And what we want to do is simply focus on one thing at a time. So let's focus on moving all the numbers to the right-hand side of the equation. So over here, I have a negative 1 on the left-hand side of the equation. Now remember, I want all my numbers to the right-hand side. So how can I get rid of this negative 1 on the left-hand side? Well, what we can do is add a 1 to it because negative 1 plus 1 is 0. But if I add a 1 to the left-hand side of the equation, I also have to add a 1 to the right-hand side of the equation. And the way you want to show this is in this uh, format right here. Okay, so we're going to add 1 to both sides of the equation, and then we're going to add down in a column manner. All right, so 3x plus nothing is 3x. Negative 1 plus a positive 1, or uh, 1 minus 1, or negative 1 plus a uh, positive 1, either way you want to look, kind of look at it, uh, the answer there is 0. So we don't need to write a 0, but effectively what we did here is got rid of any numbers on the left-hand side. So let's continue on on the other side of the equation. We have 2x plus nothing is 2x, and then 11 plus 1 is 12. So we're going to add a 12 right there. Okay, so we took one step, and now we have all of our numbers to the right-hand side of the equation. So now we're down to 3x is equal to 2x plus 12. So our final step here is to move all of our variable terms to the left-hand side of the equation. So we need, we need to move this 2x to the other side. So we're going to do the same thing or the same kind of a strategy, and that is we're going to subtract 2x from this side of the equation to kind of get rid of it. But if I subtract a, a 2x from this side, I also have to subtract a 2x from the other side of the equation. All right, so let's go ahead and add down in a column manner. We're almost done. So 3x minus 2x is what? That's 1x. So in algebra, uh, when you have things called like terms, right? So 3x and 2x are what we call like terms because they have the same variable to the same power. So we have an x here, but really this is x to the first power. So anytime you have two variable terms where the variables are exactly the same, with the exact same power, you can add and subtract the numbers in front of those terms called coefficients. All right, so 3x minus 2x is going to be 3 minus 2, or 1. So on the left-hand side, we have 1x. And then, of course, over here, we have 2x minus 2x. That's 0. And then 12 plus 0 is 12. All right, so we, uh, so we have 1x is equal to 12. And 1x is the same thing as x. So 1x is equal to 12, or x is equal to 12, is the solution. OK, so again, we're talking about a multi-step equation. And in algebra and in uh, mathematics in general, 
the way you want to uh, learn math or to practice math is one step at a time, right? It's so easy to make an error. And if you're not practicing math in a correct manner or seeing kind of uh, examples of how to solve problems that are really thorough step by step, and that's what I try to do in all of my YouTube videos and particularly my homeschool math courses, right? I give you a full comprehensive uh, lesson and then I break uh, multiple problems down step by step so you can follow and understand the process. So again, if you're interested in my homeschool math program, you can find more information about it in the links uh, in this video. But with all that being said, I definitely wish you all the best in your homeschooling adventures. Thank you for your time and have a great day.